So as a summary from the previous video, if we want to find a molecular formula, we're going to need two things. We're going to need an empirical formula of the compound and its molecular mass. Why do we need those? Because the molecular mass is a multiple of the empirical mass. And we use it to determine which is the actual formula of the molecule. As a, for instance, if we had some hydrocarbon with the empirical formula of CH2, and we knew that the molecular mass of the compound that it is referencing was, say, 70, then we could use the empirical formula to readily calculate the empirical mass, 14 atomic mass units in this example. And we know that the molecular formula mass, the molecular mass, I should say, is a multiple of that empirical mass. In this case, if we divide 70, the molecular mass, by 14, the empirical mass, we get 5, meaning that the actual molecule has five times as many of each atom. And we would know that it's C5H10. So some example problems start off easily, and we'll get to the more involved problems. But this problem tells us that an unknown compound is analyzed to be 87.5% by mass nitrogen, and the rest is hydrogen. Well, that means I can assume that if I had a 100 gram sample, 87.5 of the grams in the sample would be nitrogen, and the other 12.5 grams in the sample would be the hydrogen. I can then go ahead and find my empirical formula because an empirical formula is a lowest whole number ratio of atoms. And if I convert masses to moles, I'll be talking about actual numbers of atoms. And one mole of nitrogen atoms is the equivalent of 14 grams of nitrogen. And one mole of hydrogen atoms is the equivalent of one gram of hydrogen. So quick calculations here. And I realize that I have 12.5 moles of hydrogen and 6.25 moles of nitrogen. And I can readily see that the lowest whole number ratio here is 1 to 2, meaning I have an empirical formula of NH2 for this compound. Of course, I can use that empirical formula to get the empirical mass, 14 plus 2 would give me 16 atomic mass units of mass. And I know that the molecular mass, which was given to me in the problem, is a whole number multiple. And that whole number multiple clearly is 2, meaning we have twice as many atoms. N2, H4 is my molecular formula. So as a second example of a problem, so as another example, when three grams of a compound are burned, and this compound contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, we produce 4.4 grams of carbon dioxide, which always happens by combustion analysis. The carbon ends up becoming part of the carbon dioxide. And we also get 1.80 grams of water, and we know that the hydrogen is all oxidized to the hydrogen in water. And therefore, I can go ahead and use this information to calculate my empirical formula. Because if we get 4.40 grams of carbon dioxide, I know only a small part of that mass is actually the carbon in carbon dioxide. As a matter of fact, the formula for carbon dioxide tells me that 12 grams are carbon out of every 44 grams of carbon dioxide, meaning that our compound contained 1.2 grams of carbon. Likewise, if we got 1.80 grams of water produced in this process, 
and we know that two parts are hydrogen out of every 18 parts whole that are water, the compound before burning must have contained 0 0.20 grams of hydrogen. But of course, to get the empirical formula, we also need the mass of oxygen. And we can never assume that the oxygen in the CO2 or the hydrogen came from our original compound because the combustion process itself introduced a lot of oxygen from the atmosphere. So of course, we're going to use our original mass of three grams. And that was carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And because I know the mass of the other two parts, that being carbon, and that being hydrogen, I can subtract them from the whole and assume that the remaining 1.6 grams of this original three grams had to have been oxygen. Now that I have mass ratios of all three elements, I can find the molar ratios because of course an empirical formula is a ratio of numbers of things, not how much of something you have, but how many and one mole of carbon atoms is 12 grams of carbon atoms, meaning there was 0.1 mole of carbon in the initial compound. And since one mole of hydrogen is one gram of hydrogen, there must have been 0.2 moles of hydrogen in the initial compound. And since one mole of oxygen is the equivalent of 16 grams, we had 0.10 moles of oxygen in the original compound. And yes, the lowest whole number ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen is CH2O. It's a one to two to one ratio. So now I know what my empirical formula is. My empirical formula has an empirical mass of 12 plus two plus 16 or 30 atomic mass units. So to get the molecular formula, I need that other piece of information called molecular mass. Unfortunately, in this problem, I was not given a molecular mass. I see nothing labeled with atomic mass units. However, we need to remember that essentially molar mass, the mass of a whole mole, and the mass of a molecule are really the same thing. The only difference is they're numerically the same, but the units are different. An atomic or a molecular mass is expressed in atomic mass units, and a molar mass is expressed in grams per mole. However, the numerical value is the same for the two. So even though I was not given a molecular mass, I was given information to obtain a mass to mole ratio, because I was told the three gram sample was 0 0.033 moles, giving me a ratio of mass to moles that gives me a molar mass of 90 grams per mole. That means whatever this molecule is, it must have been 90 atomic mass units. And given that the empirical mass is 30 and the molecular mass is 90 and we expect the molecular mass to be a multiple of the empirical mass, that multiple is clearly three, meaning we have C3H6O3 as our molecular formula.